Missouri, who can describe it? It is a state of many faces, a thousand aspects, as lasting as the Ozark Hills, yet as changing as the winds that blow across Little Dixie, as restless as the currents of its mighty rivers. Perhaps there is no one Missouri. Even men and women who have known Missouri long and well view it differently. But one, at least, has this to say. This is my home country. From this big rocky bluff, I can see for miles up and down the rolling Missouri River. This is where it makes its mighty bend and flows eastward through the heart of the country, through the heart of the state. Now, I was born and raised southwest of here, down in the hill country, near what used to be Indian territory. But here, up in this river valley, I get a kind of a sense that all Missouri belongs to me just as I belong to it. These are the words of Thomas Hart Benton, artist and Missourian. He has told the story of his state in these famous bureaus in the capital at Jefferson City. Some of his neighbors thought Tom didn't make the state look pretty enough. But the eye of the artist often finds beauty in the commonplace and drama in the everyday scenes of life. In these murals, as in the works of a lifetime, Tom Benton has caught the spirit of Missouri in all its infinite variety with the perceptive eye of the painter. He has painted men at work, children at play, the charm and beauty of her countryside, the romance of her history. To Tom Benton, Missouri is a source of endless fascination. Uh, this Missouri, folks, is a very interesting country. It's also an ancient country. My house, from my house here, I looked down on a great and growing city. But long before the white man came, this place was at the conjunction of two great trails which led across Missouri and out into the west. They became later the Santa Fe and the Oregon trails. Missouri, long before the day of the white man, was at the very center of the United States. It still is. And it's a place that is always changing in the past and continues to change today. It's an immensely interesting country and a country of infinite varieties. Rivers, hills, mountains, if you call them, not too high but rugged enough when you start climbing them. We have all kinds of sports here. We have all kinds of matters for those who are interested in history. This is a very fascinating state. And I think that anybody that comes out here and merely just look at it, we'll find some of the uh, fascination that I found in it. This is a portrait, a composite of Missouri, as Tom Benton or you yourself might see it. A portrait starting with the canvas. The background in this case, the land itself. And here, nature has been almost overly generous, for Missouri has something of everything, something for everybody. Here's part of the canvas, the rolling green hills of North Missouri. This is land friendly to bluegrass and therefore to horses. Missourians are proud of the bloodlines which have made the Missouri saddle horse world famous. And nothing, perhaps, is more typically Missouri than that symbol of stubbornness, the Missouri mule. Also part of the background of our portrait are the ancient storied Ozarks, slanting southwest across the state almost from the edge of St. Louis. Stretching fold upon fold to the far horizon, these mountains have a grandeur all their own. Anyone who knows these hills will return to them year after year and find on each visit some new profile of crag or cliff, some new beauty in the autumn colors. The Ozarks stimulate the imagination of the artist or tourist when they reveal their great age, as in the elephant rock formations. The picturesque Johnson shut-ins on the east fork of the Black River were carved by eons of time, water, and weather. Below ground as well as above, formations of startling beauty are revealed in the wondrous caverns of Missouri. They too must be a part of our portrait. 
A more fragile touch of beauty is provided by the blossoms of the red bud and dogwood, which herald the coming of spring throughout the Missouri countryside. Yes, the delicacy of spring flowers is a part of the picture, but so are the great rivers that drain the continent, the Missouri, and the old man himself, the slow, ponderous, always fascinating Mississippi. In contrast are the smaller rivers and the sparkling crystal streams with their waterfalls and rapids. Great underground waterways gush to the surface in many places throughout the state. Bennett Springs, the trout fisherman's paradise. Valley Springs, graceful rocky falls, and Round Spring. The awe-inspiring Big Spring at Van Buren pours forth nearly a billion gallons of water each day, one of the world's largest springs. Each adds its beauty to the portrait. This then is the canvas. Upon it, the portrait of Missouri has been painted layer by layer. History forms the undercoating, showing through the portrait of Missouri, giving it depth and richness. A French touch to our picture, St. Genevieve, Missouri's oldest town, founded in 1732, when the territory was under the flag of France. Its architecture reflects its old world heritage. iron furnaces still standing date from the Civil War when Missouri's mineral resources played an important military role. Reminders of other early day mining ventures can be seen in these shafts at Silver Mines Park. In contrast are Missouri's new mining developments at Viburnum and Pea Ridge, helping Missouri maintain its rank as one of the nation's most important mining states. Reminders of the past are easy to find in Missouri. Old grist mills. Landmarks of the Shepherd of the Hills country are Old Matt's cabin and the post office at the Forks. At Lamar, the birthplace of the 33rd President of the United States. In Old Independence, his home on a pleasant tree-shaded street. Nearby, the papers and mementos of his years in the White House are collected in the Harry S. Truman Library. The gleam of marble from the famous quarries at Carthage, Missouri is reflected in our portrait. Marble that forms the facing of Missouri's imposing Capitol building at Jefferson City. Missouri's history is peopled with romantic figures. Long before Missouri was admitted to the Union in 1821, settlers had established trade with the Indians. First outpost of the United States in the vast Louisiana Purchase Territory was Fort Osage, built in 1808, near what is now Sibley, Missouri. Daniel Boone was among early visitors. Today, Tom Benton often studies the authentic reconstruction of the old fort with its blockhouses and trading posts. The Pony Express was destined to link the New Republic's growing Midwest with the Far West as riders left these old stables in St. Joe in April of 1860 to carry the mail to Sacramento. Century-old taverns and inns still welcome today's tourists. What name first comes to mind when you think of Missouri? It might be Bull Jesse James, or Black Jack Pershing, or maybe Stan Musial. But probably it's Mark Twain. Hannibal is Mark Twain's town. This is his boyhood home. 
forever young in this statue, as in Mark Twain's books, are his immortal creations, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. In a yearly contest in Hannibal, today's kids show they too can whitewash a fence. Although Tom Sawyer's main accomplishment was getting out of it. And each year, Hannibal picks a Becky Thatcher and a Tom Sawyer. Mark Twain knew the Mississippi in the great days of the stern-wheeled packets. He would be amazed if he could see the steadily increasing traffic on the old river today. Pleasure boats. Great barges moving smoothly through locks such as these, carrying freight to and from Missouri's gateway to the east, its largest city, St. Louis. In this metropolis of the mid-continent, we move to the foreground of our portrait of Missouri. At the Forest Park Zoo, kids and grown-ups alike have almost as much fun as the monkeys. Much of our bright and lively foreground will be bathed in light reflected from water. Missouri's many lakes are within easy reach of all who enjoy water sports. Missourians have made it easy for others to see their state. Railroads converge on Missouri from every part of the nation. Jet planes mean either coast is less than three hours away. highways crisscross the state, and between them, picturesque routes for leisurely enjoyment of the countryside. For the traveler, there are comfortable motels, resorts, and eating places along every road. Cities offer hotels luxurious and moderately priced. Missouri is a land of things to do and things to see. Big league baseball that attracts cheering thousands. And in the autumn, the color and thrills of football.
and part of the portrait might show Missourians reliving the pleasures of yesterday. Fun to be had, country style. Old time fiddlers still draw crowds. Probably nowhere do people love a centennial, a fair, or a celebration more than do Missourians. Church bells signaled the opening of the traditional German Maifest, the May Festival in Old Herman, Missouri. Kansas City's week-long American Royal Livestock and Horse Show draws visitors from all over the nation. A reminder that even as its industrial growth progresses, Missouri is firmly established on a strong agricultural base. From the great ranges of the West come cattle to these stockyards. Tom Benton suggests that Missouri's portrait would have to include the cotton fields of the boot heel country. In this south corner of the state, some of the country's finest long staple cotton is grown. And each fall, the good folk at Sykeston celebrate the harvest and choose their lovely cotton queen. The high point of the season for rural Missouri is the Sedalia State Fair. will show the flowers cultivated by Missourians. Neosho is the flower box city. Shaw's Garden in St. Louis is world renowned as a botanical center. Kansas Cityans are justly proud of the Rose Garden in Loose Park. And for our portrait, the beauty of the fall landscape. The 
grace of a well-trained bird dog on point. Quail are plentiful, and the state is in the center of one of the great flyways for migratory fowl. <laughs> And a prominent place in our portrait must be reserved for Missouri's specialty, the Ozark float trip. Trips of a day, several days and even a week or more, are arranged for the vacationer by experienced float operators. But for however long, you're away from the world of jangling telephones and traffic. Wise in the way of river lore are the guides, many of whom grew up on the river. Their skill in handling the big John boats is legendary. Ozark streams, always clear and cold, are sometimes wide and deep, other times narrow and swift. This is the home of the jack salmon and the smallmouth bass. Veteran fishermen say that inch for inch and pound for pound, the smallmouth is the world's greatest game fish. finds even the most ardent fishermen ready to eat. As you round a bend, you find the noonday camp set up on a gravel bar and lunch cooking. After lunch, you're on the river again. There's a quiet lull as the boats drift along in the warm sunshine. Suddenly, the fish get busy again, and so do you. When the sun drops low behind the towering bluffs, the boats once again scrape shore you find that the commissary department has the night's camp set up. There is a quiet time of relaxation before the evening meal. Speaking of dinner, here it comes. What's better than freshly caught fish from the cold waters? Unless, of course, you prefer charcoal broiled steaks.
As the campfire burns low, you're ready for sleep. Not even Tom Benton can paint the aroma of ham and eggs cooking on a crisp morning in the Ozarks. After breakfast, you take to the river again, eager for another day of adventure, Missouri style. No picture of Missouri would be complete without some glints and highlights reflecting the future. In universities, hospitals, and research centers, state-supported and those privately endowed, teachers and scientists attack the problems of the future. The past, the present, the future. All are a part of our portrait of Missouri. Tom Benton, at work on his mural for the Truman Library in Independence, seems to symbolize the fact that it's a picture that is never really finished. He pauses to discuss the painting with an interested observer. There is much in Missouri to attract the artist, but anyone can share in its beauty. The picture, which is Missouri, constantly changing, always challenging, alternately peaceful, and vibrant. Missourians invite you to see it for yourself, to let the Show Me State show you its living portrait.